Um, I'll uh, share with you a review of China and Hong Kong stock market in the first quarter, overview of China's economy and uh, the uh, outlook in the rest of 2022. Uh, also, I will share with you our views on the outlook of the Chinese Yuan. And then uh, we'll uh, uh, also share with you the index targets for the second quarter, uh, followed by our stock picks. And also, I uh, understand that uh, the SGX has launched uh, DLC, Daily Leverage Certificates, uh, to be traded in Singapore uh, with Hong Kong underlying. So I will also cover uh, part of my uh, uh, presentation today will also cover trading opportunities in DLC with Hong Kong underlying. Okay. Um, as you may be aware, the uh, China and Hong Kong market uh, did not fare well last year, and it continued uh, the weakness in the first quarter this year. Shanghai Composite Index was down 11.9% uh, in the first quarter this year. Uh, the Sunshine Component Index was down even more, 18.4% uh, in the first quarter. As for the Hang Seng Index, it was down 6% in the first quarter. But uh, I want to point out that we had a sharp sell-off uh, in mid-May, uh, mid-March. Uh, the Hang Seng Index dropped more than 6,000 points from above 25,000 to a low of 18,235. Uh, hit in mid-March, which was uh, near 10-year low, the lowest level, lowest index level since um, June 2012. But uh, because the uh, sell-off was too drastic, so we also uh, saw a sharp rally uh, in the uh, second part of March. Now the index rebounded to around uh, 21,800 from uh, uh, 18,235. Uh, the Hang Seng Tech Index was down almost 20% in the first quarter. It also hit a new low uh, after the launch uh, uh, after the launch of the index, a new low of 3,463 points. Uh, but since then, it also rebounded quite uh, strongly. Now it's trading around 4,400 points. So it has rebounded about 1,000 points from the uh, recent low of 3,463. Okay, uh, what are the reasons for the uh, sharp sell-off in, uh, in mid-March? Uh, it's attributable to uh, uh, many negative factors and all these negative factors uh, constitute a, a so-called uh, perfect storm of headwinds, which includes uh, Russia-Ukraine crisis, uh, which is still ongoing, and then U.S.-China relations. Uh, it also re, uh, remain questionable whether China will uh, support Russia. Uh, if, uh, if that's the case, U.S. may also uh, announce sanctions on China that will further uh, worsen the relation between the two countries. And then uh, we, uh, uh, we are encountering a more hawkish Fed. Uh, the uh, minutes, uh, March uh, FOMC minutes indicated that uh, future rate hikes will be in the uh, in 50 basis point instead of uh, 25 basis point. And also it is expected that the Fed will start shrinking its balance sheet uh, from uh, May this year. And uh, there's the worry that uh, hawkish threat may uh, result in a hard landing in the US economy, and uh, which may lead the uh, US economy into a recession. And also the inverted uh, yield curve uh, seen in the last two weeks uh, between uh, the uh, two-year treasury and 10-year treasury uh, is also uh, uh, indicated that uh, the U.S. economy may be heading for a recession. So it uh, depends very much on how uh, the Fed uh, will maneuver this uh, lending, uh, whether it will result in a hard lending or soft lending. And then uh, another uh, negative factor is the uh, COVID-19 surge, the Omicron uh, variant uh, surge first in Hong Kong, uh, starting from uh, January, early early this year, and then later uh, spread to uh, China, 
now you uh, pro have probably uh, read about news of the uh, outbreak in Shanghai and other neighboring cities. Uh, and China had decided to uh, adopt a very stringent uh, restriction policy to uh, uh, control this uh, uh, Omicron spread. So it will deal a uh, severe blow to uh, economic activities, which are uh, I will show you uh, as, as demonstrated uh, by the, the PMI's Purchasing Manager Index. And then uh, starting uh, throughout the last year, the uh, China uh, market was uh, uh, dampened by uh, worries about property develops, developers default. Uh, so this will continue to uh, weigh on the market. And then uh, adding to that is worries about Chinese stocks uh, being delisted, getting delisted from the US because of non-compliance of uh, US accounting policies. Uh, although both countries, um, the regulators of both countries are uh, holding talks recently uh, to solve the, the, the issue, but whether there is uh, uh, early settlement uh, remains to be seen. And then uh, the tech uh, index uh, fare very badly, partly because of uh, tightening regulation on tech companies, antitrust uh, policies, as well as uh, heavy fines uh, on those companies. So these are the headwinds that uh, combine uh, together, caused the sharp uh, sell-off uh, in the Hong Kong market uh, in mid-March. Okay, uh, but if we, if you look at the valuation uh, of the Hong Kong uh, market now, is uh, the cheapest among uh, all the ma uh, major mature markets in, in, in the world. Uh, the Hang Seng Index is currently trading at eight times PE, 0 0.87 times P book, and yielding uh, around 3% compared to the S&P uh, uh, 200 index, uh, which is trading at 18 times PE. Uh, the uh, S&P 500 is even more uh, expensive trading at 23 times 3 years. So among all the major uh, uh, developed markets, stock markets, uh, the Hong Kong market is, uh, is trading at a very cheap uh, valuation. Okay, uh, other than the negative factors I mentioned just now, the headwinds, uh, also expectation of earnings decline this year is behind the reason why uh, the Hong Kong market is traded uh, so uh, cheap. Uh, earnings per share this year for the Hang Seng is expected to uh, drop by 22%. Uh, and then, but uh, uh, going into 2023 and 2024, we expect a rebound in the earnings, uh, in the EPS. Uh, uh, we expect growth of 14.1% in 2023 and 10.72% uh, growth in EPS in 2024. So uh, the current uh, correction uh, in the uh, index uh, has already, uh, to a certain extent, priced in this expected earnings uh, decline in 2022, and as well as other uh, headwinds uh, the market is facing. Okay. Um, now let's look at uh, how the China's how China's economy uh, fare in the first quarter and the uh, outlook in 2022. Actually, uh, uh, the economic data uh, for the first two months uh, came in much better than uh, market expectation. Uh, we saw a pickup in economic activities in China in the first two months of uh, 2022, but. Uh, unfortunately, because of this uh, outbreak, uh, this uh, of the, the spread of the Omicron variant, uh, starting uh, coming in uh, in um, March, uh, now uh, the outlook of the China uh, of the China's economy uh, is more worrying. Worrying. Uh, fixed asset investment uh, rose by twelve point two percent in the January February period which is well above the forecast of a 5% increase. Uh, and within fixed asset investment, that in high-tech manufacturing saw one of the largest increases, up by 42.7%. Uh, 
and infrastructure investment grew by 8.1%. Per, uh, however, investment in real estate development is still lagging. It only rose by 3.7% in uh, the January, uh, February period. Uh, even, uh, and property sales uh, fare even uh, worse. Commercial floor space sold in Feb January and February fell by 9.6%. Uh, it's, uh, it's affected by the, uh, the, the property developer default uh, concerns as well as the slowdown in uh, property sales. Okay. Industrial output in the first two months of uh, 2022 rose 7.5% from a year earlier, which is the fastest pace since June 2021 and much higher, uh, came in much higher than uh, market expectation of a 3.9% rise. Uh, the output of high tech manufacturing sector jumped 14.4% and the output of new energy vehicles locked a market increase of 150.5%. As for retail sales, uh, we also saw a rebound in uh, retail sales uh, after the decline uh, over the last four months from sub, uh, September 2021 to December 2021. Uh, retail sales that's been lacking since COVID-19 hit expanded 6.7% year on year in the first two months of 2022 amid rising demand during the Lunar New Year holidays and the Winter Olympic Games. It also marked the quickest uh, uh, rise since June last year and also uh, came in much higher than expectation of a 3% increase. Uh, it is supported by steady growth in auto uh, sales uh, after declines for much of last year, uh, which helped boost retail sales. Okay, so if we look at the three major uh, in, in economic indicator, industrial output, retail sales, and fixed asset investment, actually they all came in much better than expectation in the first two months of uh, this year. Uh, if not because of the uh, Omicron variant, we, uh, the, the, uh, the Chinese economy should be on a firm footing and uh, would likely uh, achieve the 5.5% growth target set by the uh, Chinese government. Uh, uh, industrial profits uh, rose 5% from a year earlier in January uh, and February, driven by surging profits in the energy and raw material sectors, thanks to higher prices of commodities such as crude oil and uh, coal. Okay. Uh, now, uh, the uh, US is uh, 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 dampened by uh, inflationary pressures. Uh, China is less so. Uh, China's CPI remained stable in February, uh, rose only 0.9% year on year. Uh, and the PPI uh, producer price index eased to the slowest annual pace in eight months. Uh, it, uh, PPI only rose by 8.8% uh, in February, um, uh, but it is expected to pick up again in the coming months from surging prices of global commodities, including oil. Uh, the Chinese government left its 2022 CPI target at around 3%, unchanged from 2021. So in terms of uh, inflation in China, especially consumer inflation is still very subdued. Uh, so uh, we expect uh, the, the, the CPI target of 3% will, uh, will be met this year, and which gives room for the Chinese government to uh, cut interest rate uh, uh, to support the economy as the recent uh, data shows that the economy uh, is decelerating. So. Uh, uh, we believe that Chinese, the Chinese government has room to uh, cut interest rates. Um, uh, official PMI and also the Tsai Sin uh, PMI uh, both show that uh, the economy is in a contraction phase, has uh, uh, fallen into contraction phase. Uh, for instance, the official manufacturing PMI dropped to 49.5 in February, in uh, March, from 50.2 uh, in February. 
And the non-manufacturing PMI uh, also dropped to 48.4 from 51.6. Uh, the uh, this PMI indicate that recent efforts to rein in the largest virus outbreak since early 2020 weigh heavily on activity, especially in surfaces, because the non-manufacturing PMI, both official and the Tsai Sing uh, PMI, drop more than the manufacturing uh, PMI. Okay. Uh, 2022, uh, we believe that to spur growth, the PBOC will low, uh, actually the PBOC uh, lowered mortgage lending benchmark rates in January this year to support to spur growth as well as to support the property market. And then uh, in December last year, the PBOC uh, has cut its reserve requirement ratio, the RRR. Uh, going forward, uh, lingering weakness in China's property market and also renewed COVID-19 related lockdowns together with global macroeconomic challenges are weighing on the country's near-term economic growth prospect. So we believe uh, there will be more accommodative monetary and fiscal policies, including a uh, further cut uh, in the RRR. Uh, actually, uh, following the uh, announcement of the P PMI, it is widely expected that the PBOC will cut interest rate as well as uh, uh, cut the RRR, uh, the bank's requ reserve requirement ratio uh, in this month uh, by uh, 50 basis point uh, cut in RRR as well as five to 10 basis point cut in the uh, MLF uh, the medium term uh, facility, uh, medium uh, loan facility, MLF uh, interest rate. Uh, but uh, aggressive credit easing may be unlikely. We don't expect uh, huge hefty cuts in, uh, in interest rates and more than 50 uh, basis point uh, reduction in the RRR. Uh, the PBOC said it will pay more than 1 trillion yuan in profit to the central government this year in a bid to help support fiscal spending and ease money supply. So besides uh, uh, loosening monetary policies, we also expect more fiscal policies. Uh, for instance, more uh, investment and spending in infrastructure to help support the economy. Uh, so we, we cast, uh, forecast for the time being 4.9% uh, GDP growth for China this year against the official target of 5.5%. Uh, if the government uh, really wishes to uh, meet the target, uh, the official target, I think uh, the, uh, it has to roll out more uh, supportive, supportive policies uh, to uh, uh, reach the target. Okay, uh, here uh, we'll share with you our uh, uh, view on the Yuan the renminbi's outlook. Actually, uh, so far this year, year to date, uh, the yuan has been one of the standout performers against the US dollar uh, because the US dollar was very, very strong uh, on expectation of uh, interest rate uh, heights uh, by the Fed. Uh, last night, the, the US dollar index uh, uh, breached uh, uh, briefly above uh, uh, 100. Uh, which is the highest in the last three years. Uh, so uh, year to date, only three currencies managed to appreciate against the US dollar, uh, namely the Brazilian real, uh, Colombian peso, and the South uh, African rand. Uh, Chinese yuan depreciates slightly, only slightly, very marginally against the US dollar. Okay, so it's still uh, very resilient uh, this year. Uh, Singapore dollar uh, depreciates slightly more than the yuan uh, and, uh, and the Hong Kong dollar uh, so far this year. Okay. Um, I think one must uh, be aware that China is at a, at a deep, completely different stage in the economic cycle to the United States. Uh, the Fed now is focusing on fighting inflation, while Beijing's priority is supporting the pace of like, economic growth. So we expect different. Uh, policies, different different directions, uh, moving in different directions, the policies of uh, 
uh, the central banks in China and the US will be moving in a uh, different direction. The PBOC is expected to cut interest rate further, which will erode the nominal China US U spread that currently favors the yuan. Uh, however, we, as I mentioned just now, uh, we do not expect aggressive moves from the PBOC. And if the initiative Beijing is adopting, are uh, also the policies that should stand China in good, it will uh, ultimately lend support to the Yuan. So it depends whether uh, the initiatives are effective in uh, supporting the economy. Uh, if uh, the economy uh, holds up well, then we don't expect much, uh, very uh, big uh, downward pressure on the Yuan. Um, this chart shows the correlation between GDP growth and uh, between China and the US and the renminbi exchange rate uh, versus the US dollar. Uh, the blue line uh, represents the uh, uh, spot rate of the yuan, uh, which currently is uh, around 6.4 uh, to one, uh, uh, last year is 6.4, now it's uh, below 6.4 uh, to uh, one US dollar. And the green line is the GDP growth spread between China and the US. So from 2015 to 2019, due to the decline of China's long-term potential growth rate, the gap between China and the United States economic growth rate uh, has gradually narrowed from five percentage points to about three percentage points. Uh, you can see here. Uh, so the, uh, the narrowing of the uh, GDP growth spread will result in a weakening uh, uh, yuan. Uh, the yuan weakened to uh, around uh, seven uh, to one US dollar uh, uh, before 2020. Uh, and uh, the renminbi exchange rate has maintained a depreciation trend uh, from 2015 to 2019 uh, due to the narrowing of the GDP growth, uh, uh, the gap between China and the uh, US. Uh, however, with the outbreak of COVID-19, the GDP gap between China and the United States has widened to 5.6 percentage points. That means China, after the uh, outbreak of COVID-19, China is the first country or among the, 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 uh, the countries that uh, recover from, uh, from the outbreak. Uh, so the economic growth rate uh, picked up and the gap, uh, the GDP gap uh, widened to 5.6 percentage points. And uh, due to that, uh, the, uh, we, we saw a appreciation in the renminbi in 2021, to, from 2020 to 2021. Uh, it appreciated from uh, about seven yuan to one US dollar to uh, the reason low, reason high uh, for, for the yuan is, uh, is a, a, a reason high, uh, close to 6.3 yuan to one US dollar. Uh, but lately, uh, it started to weaken a bit, uh, depreciated to uh, around 6.36, uh, between 6.36 and 6.37. Uh, because the GDP gap between China and the United States uh, is narrowing again. Uh, this year, we expect the gap to narrow further to about 2.4 percentage points uh, based on the assumption that US economy GDP growth is, is expected to be 2.5 percent. And China, uh, we are ex uh, expecting uh, 4.9 percent. So 4.9 percent minus 2.5 percent. Uh, the GDP gap between China and US uh, would narrow to about 2.4 percentage points. A uh, smaller gap would uh, mean um, a, a, a weaker uh, yuan, uh, so that will add pressure to the uh, yuan. And also the interest spread, uh, uh, the narrowing interest spread between the US and China, uh, as US is uh, uh, raising interest rates and China is expected to uh, cut interest rate further will also add pressure uh, to the yuan. Uh, uh, this year, we expect the yuan to uh, trade between uh, 6.32 uh, 
uh, resistance is expected uh, between 6.32 to 6.33, around 6.32 and 6.33 to one US dollar. And uh, the uh, support uh, is expected to be, to be around 6.42. Uh, so the range, expected range uh, for the uh, renminbi exchange rate, exchange rate uh, this year is between 6.32 and 6.42. Okay. Uh, then we, uh, uh, this is our index target for uh, the second quarter. Uh, the Shanghai Composite Index has hit a low, uh, close to 3,000 points uh, in, uh, in mid-March. And then it has rebounded now, it's trading at around 3,250 points. Our forecast range for the Shanghai Composite Index in the second quarter is uh, 3,020 to 3,400. Uh, we expect uh, a re stiff resistance around 3,400 but uh, uh, do not expect the uh, Shanghai index to drop below 3,000, uh, barring any uh, unforeseen uh, negative factors uh, that may emerge. Okay, as for the Shenzhen uh, component index, we, our forecast range for the second quarter is 11,000, uh, between 11,000 and 13,000 uh, uh, and 50 points. 11,000 and 13,050 points. Uh, for the Hang Seng Index, our forecast range is 20,100 to 23,300, uh, about 2,000 uh, points uh, uh, range. As for the Hang Seng uh, Tech Index, our forecast range uh, for the second quarter would be between 4,050 and 4,750. Uh, it will be more volatile uh, compared to the Shanghai uh, Competitive Index because of uh, uh, first on the uh, US side, if uh, the uh, NASDAQ continues to come under selling pressure, uh, it will also affect the tech index. Uh, and then uh, the uh, regulation risks, uh, as well as the, the listing uh, news about U.S. Uh, Chinese companies uh, getting delisted in the in the U.S. Uh, would also uh, bring about volatility to the index uh, in the second quarter. So these are the uncertain factors that are uh, uh, affecting the the Hang Seng Tech Index. Okay. Uh, our stock picks this time round. Uh, you know this person. Uh, looks familiar, right? Because he uh, resembles a bit his father. This is Victor Lee, uh, the eldest son of uh, Lee Ka Shing, the wealthiest uh, man in Hong Kong. Uh, so uh, the uh, stock picks uh, uh, for the second quarter, we focus on uh, Lee's uh, flagship companies, uh, uh, or namely Xiong Kong Hutchison, CKH. Uh, group of companies. Um, last year, CKH group of companies were also hit by the, uh, epi uh, the COVID-19 epidemic and also uh, macroeconomic factors. Uh, all four companies within the group experienced profit decline. But in 2021, uh, last year, uh, all four companies recovered very uh, healthily. Uh, and uh, show uh, earnings growth uh, in 2021. At the earnings conference call, Victor Lee said that pan the pandemic is a stress test for the group and the group has uh, uh, gone through this stress test, uh, reflecting their high asset quality and financial discipline. Okay. Um, CKH group of company actually comprise five companies, namely CKH Holdings. CKH stands for Cheong Kong, uh, H stands for Hutchison Home Po. So the, the two companies are merged uh, to become CKH. Uh, so you have uh, a company, a uh, holding company, CKH Holdings, uh, stock code 00001, uh, power assets 0006, CKI Holdings, which stands for Cheong Kong Infrastructure. Uh, the stock code is 1038. Cheong Kong Asset, CK Asset, 
the stock code uh, is 1113 and Hong Kong Electric uh, is a trust law. Uh, the, uh, the stock code is 2638. So this is a, a, a brief introduction of the business uh, nature, businesses of uh, each of these companies. CKH is a conglomerate with businesses covering ports, retail, infrastructure, energy, telecommunications, finance, and investment. Electric power is engaged in diversified businesses, such as power generation, transmission and distribution, gas transmission and distribution, as well as oil storage and oil transportation. Its business covers the United Kingdom, Australia, Hong Kong, mainland China, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Thailand, Canada, and the United States. At the same time, it hosts Hong Kong Electric 2638, 33.37% uh, equity in Hong Kong Electric. Okay, so Hong Kong Electric is actually a subsidiary of uh, uh, electric power. Uh, CKI, China, uh, Cheong Kong Infrastructure Holdings. Infra is, infrastructure business is located in Hong Kong, mainland China, the United Kingdom, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. And it holds 35.96% uh, stake in electric power. So there's this, actually, if you, uh, if you invest in CKI, you indirectly, uh, you are also indirectly investing in power assets, uh, as it, uh, electric power as it uh, owns 35.96 of the company. And then uh, Electric Power owns 33% um, stake in Hong Kong Electric. So uh, CKI indirectly hosts uh, these two companies. Um, CK Asset, Cheong Kong Asset Group is principally engaged in property sales. It is the second largest property developer in Hong Kong by market cap. Uh, uh, behind uh, San Hong Kai. Uh, it, also is, it is also engaged in property leasing, uh, hotels and service suites, uh, aircraft leasing, pubs. Uh, it has acquired a, 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 a pub uh, operator in the UK. Uh, and also it, it has acquired infrastructure and utility assets from the Lee Ka Shing. Uh, foundation, which I'll uh, go into details later. Hong Kong Electric is uh, a, a power company. It's principally engaged in electricity generation for supply uh, of electricity to Hong Kong Island and Lemma Island. So Hong Kong, uh, there we have two uh, utilities companies, two uh, electric companies, namely Hong Kong Electric and uh, 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 China Light and Power. Uh, China Light and Power uh, is responsible for supplying uh, electricity to Kowloon and the new territories, whereas Hong Kong Electric is uh, 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 responsible for supplying electricity to Hong Kong Island, <clears throat> Hong Kong Island and Lemma Island. Okay. Um, Let's look at CKH, uh, Cheong Kong Hutchison Holdings, uh, 0001. The group reported EBITDA and EBIT growth of 15%, 20% with respectively in 2021, primarily driven by improvements in the ports and retail divisions, together with positive underlying results of Cenefus Energy, as opposed, as opposed to significant losses reported by Husky Energy in 2020. I will uh, uh, detail about the relationship between Senovus Energy and Husky Energy later. Uh, this improvement, however, these improvements were partly offset by lower contribution from the telecommunications division, as the operating environment remains challenging, particularly in Italy. Uh, profit attributable to shareholders for 2021 increased 16% to 33.5 billion Hong Kong dollars. Excluding one-off impacts in 2020 and 2021, the group's underlying profit uh, attributable to shareholders actually increased by 30% in 2021. Okay, uh, if you look at this table, you will have uh, uh, an idea of what uh, are the business, major bis main businesses 
uh, that Cheong Kong Hutchison Holding CKH uh, is engaging in. Uh, for instance, ports and related services. Uh, in terms of revenue, it accounts uh, for 9% uh, of the whole, whole group. Retail accounts for 39% uh, is the uh, uh, cash cow or the, uh, the, the, the uh, core uh, business of the company. Infrastructure accounts for 13%. Uh, CK Hutchison Group Telecom, uh, which mainly uh, uh, contains the business uh, operation in Europe, uh, accounts for 21% of the uh, group's revenue. Hutchison Asia Telecommunications uh, uh, accounts for uh, only 2% of the group's revenue and finance investment and others account for 16%. Okay, so you can see from this table, the comparison between 2021 revenue EBITDA uh, and 2020 revenue and EBITDA, uh, 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 there was a, a healthy growth in terms of revenue, total revenue compared to uh, 2020 as well as uh, the total EBITDA uh, also grows uh, healthily from uh, 2020. Okay, uh, so the, this is the revenue. The revenue of CKH Holdings experienced a uh, drop in 2020 uh, hit by the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. But since then, it has uh, start, it started to grow again in 2021. And 2022 and 2023, uh, we expect further revenue growth as well as earnings growth. Year-on-year uh, uh, -year growth rate would be between 4 and 5% in the next two years. And then uh, 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 this is the net income, uh, forecast net income it is expected to uh, grow to uh, more than 35 billion Hong Kong dollar in 2023. Uh, this is the breakdown of the uh, uh, geographical location of its business. 55% uh, of the revenue comes from Europe uh, and 12% uh, comes from Hong Kong, 10% from mainland China, another 18% uh, from Asia, Australia and other countries. Um, CKH, just now I mentioned Husky and Senovas Energy. CKH uh, Holdings originally held four, owned 40.19% uh, stake in Husky Energy. Uh, so last year it sold uh, its 40.19% stake in Husky for a 15.7% interest in the merged entity with Senovas, sorry, uh, 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 spelling. Uh, typo error here. It should be C E N O V U S, Cenovus Energy, to create Canada's third largest player to help save costs and also uh, end losses. Uh, the synergy so far has generated uh, uh, by the merger is as much as 1.2 billion Canadian dollars. Besides that, Cenovus is a listed company, so you can it's listed on the uh, New York Stock Exchange. So it, uh, it benefited by the uh, strong uh, crude oil prices. Its share price has, ris has uh, risen uh, quite substantially in the last uh, six months. So it also uh, benefit CKH because now CKH uh, holds 15.7 interest in Senovus. Okay. Um, uh, some uh, assets, uh, Disposal is expected uh, going forward. On, Mar on 3rd of March 2022, the group obtained conditional regulatory approval for the sale of its tower assets in the UK. Uh, so subject to the satisfactory conclusions to the conditions, the transaction is expected to complete in the second half of 2022. So uh, the group after the sale is expected to uh, uh, realize some profits uh, and also uh, the sales proceed uh, from the uh, transaction will, will uh, strengthen its financial, uh, 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 its, its finance. Uh, it is also reported that the group was in talks uh, for a potential sale of its 40% stake 
in UK power networks, UKPN, which may be valued at 15 billion pounds. So this is a, a very uh, uh, a mega deal. If that goes through, uh, the group will be able to uh, uh, realize about 40% uh, of 20 is about uh, 10, 12, uh, let me see. 20 billion, 40%, it's about 8, 8, 8 billion, 8 billion US dollar uh, from the uh, sales proceed. Okay. Um, so uh, all in all, Cheong Kong Holding, we uh, view as a recovery play. After the, uh, the, the downturn in 2020, affected by the COVID, so its business starts to recover last year. We also expect the opening up uh, of, uh, uh, the, of Europe, uh, and as well as uh, the uh, economic growth picking up uh, in Europe and other uh, countries that it operates, uh, it has business operation, will help its recovery uh, 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 this year. So it's a recovery play among the uh, Cheong Kong uh, holding group of companies, Cheong Kong, uh, Hutchison, CKH uh, group of companies. Uh, we recommend to buy at 54 Hong Kong dollars. We have set a target of 60 Hong Kong dollars and uh, suggested stop loss uh, at 51 Hong Kong dollars. So if you look at this price chart, actually it outperformed the, uh, the Hang Seng Index this year. Uh, it, it has risen by about uh, more than 10% uh, from about 10% from uh, year to date uh, in the first quarter. Okay, uh, the other company CKI, uh, uh, CKI will be viewed as a U play. Uh, if you, uh, we recommend CKH uh, as, as a recovery play and CKI as a U play. The group recorded a profit attributable to shareholders of 7.515 billion uh, in 2021, a 3% increase over the previous year. Uh, but excluding the non-cash deferred tax related charges for the United Kingdom operations in 2020 and 2021, as well as the disposal gain from the sale of Portugal renewable energy in 2020, the adjusted profit attributable to shareholders uh, actually increased by 22% in 2021. Funds from operation uh, uh, cash flow, uh, operation cash flows amounted to 8.4 billion Hong Kong dollar uh, in 2021, an increase of 8% year on year, testament to CKI, uh, Cheong Kong Infrastructure's strong recurring cash flow. And as at 31st December 2021, CKI has cash on hand of 8.1 billion Hong Kong dollar and a net debt to net total capital ratio of just 14.7%. So it is a defensive pay, uh, play. Uh, and also it has very good track record of uh, dividend paying. The board of directors has recommended a final dividend of $1.81 per share together with the interim dividend of 69 cents uh, per share, the total dividend for the year will amount to $2.50 Hong Kong cents, uh, $2.5 uh, Hong Kong dollars per share compared to $2.47 uh, Hong Kong dollar uh, in 2020. So uh, uh, on the right hand side, you can see that since 2017, uh, the company uh, has been increasing its dividend payout every year uh, uh, since 2020, uh, 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 sorry, it's uh, 2000, year 2000. Uh, it represents 25 consecutive, consecutive years of dividend growth uh, since listing. Uh, CKI will also benefit uh, from the potential, just now I mentioned uh, the potential sale of UKPN. Uh, UK Power Network, uh, which is 40% owned by CKH, Cheong uh, uh, Kong uh, Hutchison Holding, and CKI owns 54.4% of UKPN. Uh, if uh, the deal goes through, uh, it, may, uh, it will record the disposal gain 
equivalent to eleven dollar uh, uh, thirty three cents per share, or twenty two point five percent of of its share price. It's currently trading at uh, fifty something Hong Kong dollars. Uh, so we will uh, 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 gen, uh, uh, bring about a disposal gain uh, of about eleven dollars uh, or so, uh, and could lead to the distribution of a special dividend to uh, the shareholders. Okay, uh, the revenue side uh, is quite steady uh, over the last few years, except a slight drop in 2019 uh, affected by the COVID, uh, COVID, uh, the, 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 uh, the commencement of the COVID-19 outbreak. But 2020, it, re it's it already rebounded uh, from compared to 2019. And the next three years, we expect uh, stable uh, growth in revenue. Uh, its share price uh, very obviously outperformed the Hang Seng Index. Uh, it has uh, risen uh, close to 20% year to date. Uh, we recommend uh, buy at 51 Hong Kong dollars. Our target uh, sets at 58 and stop loss recommend suggested stop loss at 49 Hong Kong dollars. So CKI would be a U play, a defensive U play. CKH holdings is a recovery play. Uh, uh, what about CK asset, uh, the third company uh, within the group? Uh, the group's profit attributable to shareholders for 2021 amounted to 21.24 billion Hong Kong dollars, representing to an increase of 30.5% as compared to 2020. Last year, the group acquired from Lee Kashing Foundation interest in UK power networks, Northumbrian Water, Wales and West Utilities, and Dutch Enviro Energy. Uh, and settle the consideration of 17, 17 billion Hong Kong dollar by the issue of 333 uh, mil, uh, million shares to Li Kaxing Foundation. Uh, because the issue of new shares will uh, have a dilution impact on the uh, existing shares. So the group also bought back uh, 380 million shares for 19.38 billion to offset the dilution impact of issuing the consideration shares. And by this transaction, the company has acquired uh, equities in four, in these four infrastructure assets, which will provide an additional recurrent income stream and immediate contributions to the group. Uh, and also will uh, uh, diversify its business uh, from uh, the focusing on property sales and property development and property investment. Uh, in addition, an agreement was made uh, uh, last year to dispose of its interest in the aircraft fleet. It's also in the uh, aircraft leasing business, but uh, the company to, uh, has decided to quit, uh, to exit this business. So it has reached an agreement with the uh, uh, buyer uh, last year to dispose of his interest in the uh, aircraft uh, leasing uh, company, uh, which uh, is expected to be completed uh, this year. Okay, so we expect uh, healthy, stable revenue growth in the next two years, uh, uh, more, uh, uh, around 6% uh, revenue growth uh, in the next two years. Um, there's also uh, asset disposal lately. CK Asset Holdings has sold uh, number five Broadgate uh, in London, which is the headquarter of UBS Group uh, for 1.2 billion pound uh, uh, or 1.6 billion US dollar, uh, just less than four years after acquiring it in June 2018 for 1 billion pound. So if we factor in the hedging profits and rental income received by the company throughout the holding period and the appreciation of the property value over the original cost, the return on investment for the disposal is 4.8 billion Hong Kong dollar or 610 million US dollar or 45% uh, return uh, on the invest uh, on the uh, amount that it, it, it pay on the price it pays for uh, this uh, property uh, less than four years ago. Uh, so uh, 
Li Ka-shing is famous for his uh, 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 foresight as well as uh, his uh, deal making. Uh, if you remember uh, the sale of orange uh, uh, at, uh, to uh, become uh, the uh, uh, three tel telecom uh, also earns the, uh, uh, brings about uh, hefty profits to the company uh, many years ago. Okay. Um, CK Asset now is trading at a P book of uh, 0 0.54 times. Uh, its uh, net asset value is around 100 uh, Hong Kong dollars, but it's now trading at 50. Uh, 50 something. Uh, we, uh, this uh, valuation, this P book valuation is also lower than the average level of uh, 0 0.64 times in the past five years. You can see uh, the red line is the average. Now it's trading around the minus one uh, standard deviation uh, in terms of uh, 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 price to book value. So uh, there's still room for potential revaluation of assets, if uh, it uh, the valuation uh, rises back to 0 0.64 uh, PB uh, with one hundred dollars uh, NAV book value, uh, the target price is expected to be sixty five Hong Kong dollars. Okay, so this will be a valuation uh, uh, val uh, valuation play. Uh, the three companies all represent different concepts, different. Uh, uh, CKH holding is a recovery play. Uh, CKI uh, infrastructure is a defensive and U play. And CK asset is a valuation play, uh, 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 banking on the revaluation of its uh, assets. Okay, uh, actually CK assets also outperformed the market. It has risen by more than 10%, uh, close to 20%. Uh, year to date, uh, we recommend uh, buy uh, at 52 Hong Kong dollars, target 65 uh, Hong Kong dollars, equivalent to 0.64 percent people, uh, and suggested stop loss at 49 uh, Hong Kong dollars. Okay, uh, then we uh, come to the last part of my presentation: uh, DLC trading opportunities in Hong Kong stocks. Uh, I uh, noticed that the, thing, uh, the SGX has uh, launched new products called uh, DLC, Daily Leverage uh, Certificates, uh, uh, where, uh, which investors can either take long position or short position. If you are bullish on the company, you can uh, open a long contract, a uh, long certificate. If you are uh, bearish, you can open a short uh, uh, certificate, uh, you can uh, short the company. So uh, I, I think they are uh, uh, quite uh, good trading opportunities in Hong Kong stocks, especially the uh, among ATM Exa, uh, Alibaba, Tencent, uh, Meituan, and Xiaomi. Because those sort of companies I expect to uh, be uh, range bound and we do expect uh, volatility in those uh, stocks. So you can either uh, go long at uh, relative low uh, price level and uh, go short uh, uh, if it rebounds to a, uh, a relatively higher level, uh, unsustainable, uh, it cannot sustain uh, uh, on those uh, levels and you can also uh, go short. Okay, Alibaba, uh, uh, we think negatives still outweigh the positives. The negatives include internet regulation risks, US delisting worries, and slowing growth. Um, uh, with regard to antitrust restriction, the Chinese government bans on uh, exclusive deals with merchants, uh, so uh, operators cannot uh, force merchants to choose uh, one between two, Erso and Yi. Uh, aggressive promotional pricing strategies are also uh, banned and unapproved investment in small companies, smaller companies. If uh, they, in the past, Alibaba has invested in smaller companies without uh, 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 making an application and uh, asking for approval. So uh, Alibaba has been fined for those unapproved investment in smaller companies. 
uh, Chinese regulators have asked their own firms to check their investments into and other linkages with Ant, uh, an affiliate of Alibaba Group, which is subjected to a sweeping uh, restructuring before uh, listing again. Uh, uh, Alibaba is also uh, under pressure, uh, will also be affected by uh, US uh, delisting uh, worries. The Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act, which became law in late 2020, requires foreign companies to be more transparent in making account, accounting documents available. So if companies cannot comply with the uh, this act, uh, this com uh, Foreign Companies Accountable Act, uh, the ultimate result is delisting uh, from the US. Uh, from the US. Uh, so uh, lately, the SEC has, re uh, has announced three, three rounds, uh, made three and, uh, rounds of announcement uh, that specifically named companies uh, slated for dis delisting if they cannot, if they are non-compliant with the Accountable Act. Uh, so we do expect there may be more further announcement from the SEC, and that would dampen uh, the sentiment uh, towards the, the tech stocks uh, listed here in Hong Kong as well. Um, its growth is also uh, slowing. Uh, third fiscal quarter, uh, 2022, uh, the revenue increased by only 10%, year on year. For Alibaba, I think a 10% growth is a very slow growth rate. Uh, all major key performance metrics are down by double digits, uh, such as income from operations decreased 86% and adjusted EBITDA uh, non, uh, decreased 27%. Steep drop in margins as well as a result of increased competition. Adjusted EBITDA margins fell from 31% in 2021 to 21% in uh, the third fiscal quarter 2022, so a drop of 10 percentage points. And we also expect a uh, lack of catalyst in its operating businesses, such as international commerce, local consumer services, digital media and entertainment, and uh, other innovation initiatives businesses are still loss making. And China's retail sales growth is also experiencing a slowdown, uh, which becomes a burden for e-commerce dependent retailers. And Alibaba may uh, revise or withdraw its sales guidance for 2022, which uh, implies a 20% to 23% growth. Uh, I think uh, we think it's quite likely uh, the chance is high that this growth rate this growth target will not be uh, uh, achieved. Okay, so uh, you can see that the price is still on a downtrend, a persistent downtrend from $270 uh, to uh, the lowest price hit in mid-March was 71. Since then, it rebounded to about 100. So uh, we uh, expect near-term support at 99 Hong Kong dollars, and the key support would be uh, at 80 lies at 80 Hong Kong dollars. Near-term resistance is expected at 121, key resistance uh, 135. So investors may uh, uh, take reference to these uh, support levels and resistance levels to trade uh, the DLCs in, uh, uh, with Alibaba as the underlying. Tencent is, also, is facing uh, internet regulation risk. Uh, China has set limited video game playing time to just three hours per week uh, for teenage players on Friday, Saturdays, and Sunday. The Cyberspace Administration of China, CAC, has recently unveiled new draft regulation requiring all online service providers to set up a youth mode for their services, stating clear limits in terms of user time, content. There's uh, not only Besides the control uh, uh, on user time, there's also regulation on content, what kind of content uh, can be uh, offered to uh, 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 young uh, users, and also the functions are also uh, regulated. The new regulatory requirements will translate into higher compliance costs for 
uh, Tencent. Uh, another negative factor, pot potential negative for Tencent is it may face possible huge fine uh, uh, levy on its mobile payment product, uh, WeChat Pay, uh, for uh, uh, huge anti-money uh, laundering fine for having loopholes that allow transactions to be used in money laundering and gambling. So uh, this one is a potential negative for the company. Uh, Tencent is also experiencing slowing growth, uh, like um, Alibaba. Its revenue in the fourth quarter only grew 8%, uh, which is the slower pace since its 2004 listing uh, in Hong Kong. Domestic gaming revenue grew a mere 1% due to a month-long licensing halt. Uh, since early last year, the uh, Chinese authority has stopped uh, uh, giving licenses to new online games. Gross margins narrow under an international expansion. Uh, Tencent uh, started its decline. Actually, it held it held uh, up well, uh, about 40 Hong, uh, 400 Hong Kong dollars before the uh, sell off in that uh, kicked in uh, in mid February, and uh, from mid February, its share price went down to below three hundred dollars, hit hitting a bottom of two hundred ninety seven, and then rebounded quite strongly. Now it's trading. Uh, at uh, 370 uh, something uh, Hong Kong dollars. So we expect near term support at 360 and key support is expected at 330. Near term resistance is uh, will lie at 390. Key resistance uh, is around 405. So uh, these are the expected uh, support levels and resistance level for Tencent. Uh, uh, for reference to in trading DLCs uh, in Singapore. Uh, Meituan uh, is facing other, its, uh, its own regulatory risk. Uh, its extensive reach among riders and merchants has drawn scrutiny, uh, resulting in regulatory action in the past 18 months, including a large antitrust fine. Uh, it's also requested, required to improve riders' benefits and uh, also uh, uh, there's pressure for, on the company to lower, to reduce the merchant commission. Uh, the latest move direct on, directed on demand delivery providers to cut commission fees. So all these uh, uh, moves will uh, erode uh, the uh, profit margin of the company, uh, as well as have an adverse impact on the company's revenue, the top, top line and as well as the margin. Uh, in the fourth quarter last year, the company's revenue rose 31% on the back of significant new business income and stable food delivery growth. However, uh, despite the rise in the revenue, net loss uh, uh, in the fourth quarter of 2021 widened to 5.34 billion yuan from a loss of 2.24, so it more than doubled. Uh, the loss in the same period a year earlier as its sales and marketing expenses surged 46%. And this marked Meituan's fifth consecutive quarter in the red. Uh, besides the antitrust fine imposed by the Chinese government in October 2021, Meituan was hit by hefty increases in food delivery related costs, higher selling and marketing expenses, and widening loss in its new initiative business segment, which includes community group buying business, Meituan Select. Uh, Meituan CEO has repeatedly warned investors of more losses to come in the next quarter as it continues to invest in the sector to seize market share. But the uh, latest outbreak of the Omicron variant may not be uh, uh, too much a negative for Meituan because uh, it's Meituan Select uh, business, community group buying business, uh, is uh, seen to be uh, benefiting from the uh, the pandemic, uh, the the, the uh, Omicron variant spread. Uh, because of the lockdown, people cannot go out uh, uh, from their home to buy food. So uh, the, this Meituan Select, uh, this is a good business opportunity for Meituan Select to uh, 
provide uh, group buying uh, services to those who are uh, quarantined at home. Uh, so there's a, a surge in demand for its um, uh, service uh, lately. And the uh, losses of, uh, from May 20 leg uh, is expected to narrow from 26.5 billion yuan last year to 16 point, uh, to around 15 billion yuan this year. So uh, its share price uh, recently uh, surged to uh, about 170 Hong Kong dollars because there, uh, there was an um, uh, analyst upgrade of the company uh, due to expectation of uh, narrowing losses from uh, CLEC, uh, May 20 CLEC. Uh, yet the disposal of uh, strategic investors uh, also uh, uh, weigh on the share price. So for Meituan, uh, we think uh, on the one hand, there is a, a positive factor uh, supporting the company share price, uh, expectation of uh, uh, narrowing losses uh, from its new business initiatives. But on the other hand, other negative factors will uh, continue to weigh on the share price. So that results in uh, higher volatility uh, in the share price. We expect near-term support around 145 Hong Kong dollars, and the key support will lie at 100 will lie at 130 Hong Kong dollars. Near-term resistance is expected uh, around 165 Hong Kong dollars. Key resistance is 180. Um, ATM X, uh, X Xiaomi. Uh, it is one of the uh, uh, four companies that. Uh, uh, show strong performance in 2021 uh, compared to Meituan, uh, Alibaba, and Tencent. It recorded a 33.5% growth in total revenue for the year 2021, while the adjusted net profits rose by 69.5% uh, from 2020. Its global smartphone shipments grew 30% year over year last year to reach 190 million units ranking it uh, number three uh, uh, globally with record high market share of 14.1%. As of December 31st uh, last year, the number of connected IoT devices on its AIoT platform reached 434 uh, million, up 33.6% uh, year over year. And it also uh, uh, saw uh, good development uh, in its overseas market uh, expansion. Revenue from overseas markets reached 163.6 billion yuan in 2021, increasing 33.7% year over year, and now accounting for nearly 50% of total revenue. Um, but uh, there's one uh, uncertain uh, factor. Uh, that is the is venture into uh, the EV industry, which is getting more and more competitive, may bring uh, about uncertainty to the uh, to the company uh, as the company plans to pump uh, to invest ten billion US dollar into its EV uh, electric vehicle build division over the next ten years. It will construct a production plant in Beijing that will be capable of producing 300,000 electric cars per year and expects to reach mass production by the first half uh, of 2024. But the uh, worry is that now the EV uh, market in China is already uh, getting very uh, competitive as there are more new startup companies entering such as Neo, uh, Xiaopeng, uh, Li, uh, uh, with and also more conventional vehicle manufacturings are increasing, they are, are stepping up in the production of EVs. So uh, uh, the competition uh, will become even more intense uh, going forward. Uh, the share price after the release of the result announcement, uh, we, we saw the share price strengthening uh, from below $12 to uh, above $13. Uh, we expect near-term support around $13. Key support is expected at $11.40, uh, which, which was the recent low hit in mid-March. Uh, near-term resistance expected 
at 14 point, sorry, 14 point, uh, uh, five, uh, 14, uh, 50 Hong Kong dollars and key resistance uh, expected at 16 uh, Hong Kong dollars. Okay, uh, BYD is also one of the underlying uh, being traded in the uh, Singapore DLC. So BYD, uh, I think uh, you may not be unfamiliar with the company, is principally engaged in automobile business, which includes new energy vehicles and traditional fuel engine vehicles. But it's worth noting that uh, uh, this month, it has announced that uh, it has uh, ceased to produce uh, any more traditional fuel engine vehicles starting from March uh, 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 2022. So going forward, it will focus uh, uh, solely on new energy vehicles, on EV, the production of EV. Uh, it's also engaged in handset components manufacturing and uh, handset assembly, assembling business. Uh, it also produced rechargeable batteries and photovoltaic business, as well as the urban rail transit and other businesses which the group has actively developed by leveraging its own technological advantages. Uh, BVD is uh, clearly a market leader in the EV industry. Sales volume of new energy vehicles saw 218% to more than 600,000 in 2021. Uh, the latest uh, monthly uh, shipment uh, surpassed 100,000 uh, in March. So it is uh, more uh, close to 10 times the average shipment of those startup companies uh, such as Neo, uh, Li and uh, Xiaopeng. Uh, it expects to double the sales volume uh, in 2022 to 1.2 million units, comprising 600,000 units of BEV and 600,000 units of PHEV. The group's market share of the new energy vehicle market currently stood at 17%, and is expected to further rise to 25% this year. Okay, uh, it, uh, its vertical integration uh, makes a difference. BYD has the capability to manufacture battery cells and IGBT transistors. These two are the most expensive components in an electric car. Vertical integration has allowed the company to shorten the development life cycle and lower overall costs by spending more time and research on research and solving potential integration problems ahead of time. So they uh, are uh, ahead of their competitors uh, because of the, uh, this vertical integration. Uh, but however, uh, year to date is still uh, uh, underperforms uh, uh, share price, but compared to other car makers such as Geely, uh, Great Wall, uh, and the uh, uh, startup companies, its share, it, it share price actually outperformed uh, by only uh, dropping uh, less than uh, last, last December, it closed at around 250 something. So it's, uh, it's dropped uh, more than 10% uh, from compared to 50, 60 percent uh, drop experience by uh, Great Wall and Geely, uh, it uh, outperforms its uh, competitors. Near-term support uh, expected around 200 Hong Kong dollars, key support uh, at 175. Uh, Near-term resistance is expected around 230, and the key resistance will be around 255. Uh, just now I mentioned G. Lee. Uh, it reported very tepid lackluster performance last year. Sales volume was only up 1% last year uh, at 1.3 million, below the company's own target of 1.5 million for the uh, year. So it's the second year in a row that the company uh, missed its sales target. The company attributed the delivery volume miss to the global chip shortage that has constrained its production across the world. And revenue was up 10.3% year on year to 101.6 billion in 2021. However, profit attributable to shareholders was down uh, by 12.4% year on year to 4.85 billion. Uh, uh, but excluding share-based payments of uh, around 6 billion yuan, 
profit attributable to shareholder was still up 9.4% uh, year on year. And gross profit margin uh, was uh, uh, not impressive. Uh, was only up 1.1 percentage point to 17.1%. Uh, compared to the startup companies such as um, Neo and Lee, uh, their gross profit margin are more than 20%. So Geely uh, lags behind uh, uh, in terms of growth, uh, in, in gross profit margin, even uh, to those new startup companies. Um, the outlook will be, remain challenging. Geely says the semiconductor supply shortage shows no sign of subsiding in 2022 and rising competition in China uh, and the country's tightening pandemic curbs and higher raw material prices amid global inflation could add further pressure on sales and margins this year. The company targets sales volume for 2022 at 1.65 million units, 27% uh, growth from uh, 2021, but uh, it, it is uh, a bit too uh, aggressive. And we expect uh, very likely the company will uh, uh, miss this, its sales target uh, three years in a row, because up to uh, March, the first quarter uh, uh, sales volume uh, in the first quarter is around 300,000, uh, which is 19% uh, uh, of the, uh, end, the year annual uh, uh, sales target behind the 25% average uh, 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 rate uh, uh, to, to, to hit the, uh, the yearly target uh, sales target. Chile uh, since last year has dropped uh, more than from uh, $20 to $11.58, uh, 40%, close to 50%. So it has dropped even more compared to uh, BYD. Uh, near term support at uh, expected $11, key support $10. Uh, near term resistance $12.50, uh, key resistance $14.20. Okay, uh, among the DLC uh, traded in Singapore, there's also one uh, pharmaceutical company, uh, Wuxi Biologics 2269. Uh, revenue increased very strongly last year by 83.3% to uh, 10,290 million. Net profit grew by 173.3% to uh, 3.5 billion. Total backlog grew 20.1% to uh, 13.5 billion uh, US dollars. And the group continued to expand its customer base. Total number of customers increased to over 470, including all the top 20 global large pharma. Uh, those 20, top 20 are all its clients. The number of non-COVID-19 projects also grew strongly last year to 447 with strong revenue growth and expectations, demonstrating that the group's robust business momentum uh, is not solely uh, attributable to uh, COVID-19 projects, but also uh, will be the group will be able to maintain its robust business momentum even without COVID-19 projects. Okay. Uh, the share price started to rebound after hitting a recent low at $40.30, and uh, its share price rebounded to close to 70 Hong Kong dollars. We expect near-term support around $57, key support uh, expected at 50 Hong Kong dollars, near-term resistance 70, key resistance uh, will be uh, around 80. Okay. Uh, so that ends my presentation today. Uh, now I would like to uh, answer some uh, question. Uh, do you think the Hang Seng 18,000 low will be retested? Not uh, likely in the second quarter, because as I explained uh, just now, uh, the uh, Hang Seng index dropped to a 10 year low, uh, around 18,000. Uh, is due to a combination of uh, negative factors, the uh, so-called so uh, perfect storm of headwinds. But we do not expect uh, those headwinds, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the recurrence of a uh, uh, snow, uh, 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 the, such a storm, a uh, uh, perfect storm in the 
in the second quarter. So some of the negative factors are started to uh, getting some improvements. For instance, Ukraine, uh, Russia, Ukraine uh, crisis. Uh, it, uh, it, now uh, both parties are uh, uh, conducting uh, peace talks uh, and the, uh, the COVID-19 outbreak in Hong Kong is now uh, gradually coming under control. So we do expect uh, some recovery uh, in the local uh, uh, retail uh, uh, sectors. Okay. Um, at what price would you recommend buying Xiaopeng and uh, JD? And what are uh, my target price uh, for them? Okay, let me check the share price. Um, Uh, so among the new startups, if you ask me which one, uh, how, how, how will I rank the three uh, new startups are uh, Zhao Che, Xin Xi Li, uh, namely Xiao Peng Li and uh, Niu. Uh, my ranking would be uh, Li, I uh, rank uh, first, la, and then uh, Xiao Peng, uh, followed by Niu. Uh, it also, it, uh, it, uh, the uh, shipment uh, in March also uh, more or less came in uh, 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 with this ranking order. Uh, Xiaopeng deliver uh, the uh, most number of uh, cars, uh, EVs in uh, March, uh, around, uh, if I remember correctly, around uh, 12,500, followed by uh, Li and new shipment was a bit disappointing. It shipped less than uh, 10,000 units of EVs in March. Okay. Um, Xiaopeng, uh, it saw support around 100, uh, the, the 20 day moving average, which now uh, lies at 106. So uh, uh, we recommend uh, to buy around uh, 106 and 107. And resistance is, ex is uh, expected at uh, 125, target price 125. Buy price 106, 107. If uh, cut loss, if it drops below 100, uh, uh, $99, you can set the uh, stop loss price at $99. Okay, uh, JD9618. Um, uh, currently is a uh, not so, uh, it, it, it share price in a rather weak mode. So it may uh, test the uh, $215 support in the near future. Uh, so uh, one can wait if uh, when it, uh, uh, test $215 uh, support and uh, can manage to hold above that level. Uh, you can set the uh, buy price at 215 uh, The target price, short-term target, I will set at uh, 230 230 uh, And the higher, the next stop, uh, next target would be 245 uh, 245 Okay. Uh, what's your view on Yum China and China ever bright envir environment after the recent sharp fall in share pricing correction? Is there opportunity for investment now? Yum China, uh, 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 wait, uh, we will recommend wait and see because it is uh, negatively affected by uh, the, uh, the COVID-19 outbreak in China now, and the lockdown uh, would uh, uh, hit its business. And how long it will last uh, remains un uh, unknown. Uh, and also it's on the list of uh, 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 companies, uh, I mean, the, the, the uh, list announced by the SEC, US SEC, uh, if the accounting policies are non compliant with the US, then it will also face uh, uh, delisting uh, uh, risk. Uh, uh, China Everbright environment, the PE is very low, uh, but 
uh, despite the low PE share price uh, underperform, it seems the market is not willing to uh, re-rate uh, the company. So uh, if you have the, uh, the company is a good company, it's uh, profits, uh, uh, saw, five, uh, saw growth uh, in uh, five years in a row, and uh, the revenue also uh, saw new highs uh, every year. Uh, but the share price uh, lags uh, un underperform. I think it's because uh, uh, the BOT nature, uh, operating uh, the business nature of the company, build, operate, and transfer uh, will uh, involve a lot of capital expend expenditure by the company. So the, uh, the debt level of the company is rather high, and the interest, uh, the finance cost every year. Uh, erodes uh, a big part of the uh, profit margin. So its strength has become its uh, weakness because uh, uh, Everbright uh, environment has been able to uh, uh, acquire a lot of new projects uh, for development. But uh, to, uh, development to develop these new projects, it has to uh, pump in uh, a lot of uh, money into those BOT projects. So uh, it, it caused the company's, uh, uh, the, the gearing level, uh, the gearing ratio is rather high and uh, the receivable. Also, uh, there's delay in the uh, uh, payment of subsidy as well as other uh, receivable uh, uh, by local governments. So uh, the, uh, the, 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 the may say, this may explain why uh, the company has been trading at a very low uh, valuation. So if you don't mind, if you have the patience, the holding power as well as the patience to wait for re-rating, I think the company is safe, I can say, but I'm uh, not sure when this re-rating uh, will happen. Okay. Um, I'll look for Hong Kong EX, uh, Ping An, uh, JD Health, Alibaba. Alibaba, I have just I, uh, talked about that. So let's focus on Hong Kong EX, Ping An, and JD Health. Uh, Hong Kong EX dropped to um, 310, around $310, and then rebounded to $390. So I think, uh, yes, hit the recent bottom. Uh, quite unlikely that will drop below uh, $300 in the near term. But because of the correction, uh, uh, the weakness in the Hong Kong market currently, uh, now daily turnover has dropped, uh, declined to around 100 uh, billion Hong Kong dollars from uh, uh, around 15, uh, 150 to 160 billion uh, a few months ago. Uh, so the, uh, the IPO market in Hong Kong has also quietened down. Uh, SPED, uh, the launch of SPED companies, are not uh, as uh, pop uh, as uh, uh, well received uh, uh, by the market as expected. So Hong Kong EX will uh, uh, will under a soft patch uh, the share price. We expect it to remain in a soft patch in the uh, coming months. Uh, but uh, don't expect the share price to drop below three hundred, and uh, it, it will. Uh, we expect a range between uh, three 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 zero and 380 uh, in, the, in the, uh, near term. Ping An will uh, fare better because of its higher uh, correlation with the property market in uh, China because of its investment exposure to property companies. So uh, earlier when the, the uh, property market uh, in China is under uh, great pressure, its share price also uh, uh, underperformed. Now its share price uh, 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 catch up, caught up because of uh, expected recovery in the uh, property uh, market, uh, pro uh, property sector. So uh, its prospect will very much depend on the uh, recovery of the property uh, uh, sector, the real estate sector in China. Uh, as for JD Health, our view is neutral. Uh, the competition uh, is still, uh, you, it's expected to getting more intense uh, from Ali uh, Health as well as uh, Ping An Good Doctor. Uh, and uh, 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 regulation on, because these are platform companies and uh, all platform companies are under the spotlight. 
uh, of the Chinese government and uh, may risk uh, tighter uh, regulation uh, uh, going forward. Okay, is China banks, particularly the big four banks, are by now consider that China's monetary policy move are opposite to the U.S. Um, uh, actually, the, the four big four banks they outperform uh, the Hang Seng Index uh, so far this year. All big four banks have uh, 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 recorded uh, uh, price gains uh, in the first three months of 2022. Uh, the uh, rate expected rate cuts will be neutral to the bank because it will uh, uh, bring about uh, downward pressure on the interest margin, uh, and, uh, uh, which, which is still under pressure uh, in the last two years. But since we do not expect very aggressive rate cuts by the PBOC, so this downward pressure on the interest margin of uh, Chinese banks will not, as, uh, will not be very uh, severe. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we expect the PBOC to uh, reduce the uh, reserve requirement ratio further. So re reducing, cutting the reserve requirement ratio will uh, release uh, liquidity, liquidity uh, back to the banking system. Every cut of 50 per, uh, basis points is expected to release about uh, 1 trillion yuan uh, liquidity to the uh, banking system. So with more liquidity, uh, the banks are, will be able to lend out more uh, and together with the uh, recovery of the property market, uh, demand for property uh, loans uh, uh, would pick up again. So that will be favor the, the, the banks. Uh, that's why uh, the banking stocks outperformed so far in the first quarter this year. But at this price, I think uh, it's, Yes, price in the positive factors I mentioned just now. And I would recommend uh, buy uh, into the tips. Uh, if there's correction, uh, then you buy uh, into the tips. Um, say, for instance, uh, CCP, uh, if his share price uh, corrects to uh, 5.75, actually not too far away from the current price of 5.89, uh, 5.75, uh, for ICBC uh, 1389, um, 1398, sorry, 1398, 398. Uh, the, if its share price uh, corrects to $4.65 $4 and $4.70, uh, we we'll also recommend buy at those uh, price level. Uh, 3988 Bank of China. Um, recommend entry price is at uh, uh, 3305, between $3 and $305. Uh, lastly, the Agricultural Bank of China. Uh, Recommend uh, entry price is 290, uh, between 290 and 295. Besides the four state owned banks, uh, we also like uh, Postal uh, Saving Bank uh, 1658, uh, which uh, shows higher profitability uh, compared to the four state owned banks. Uh, so, recommended uh, entry price is uh, 630. Currently, it's trading at 663. Uh, the code, stock code of uh, China Postal Saving Bank is 1658. Okay, so uh, now we are one and a, uh, th uh, 30, uh, one hour and 30 minutes into this uh, presentation. So uh, with uh, time's constraint, I think I would uh, answer uh, up to here. And thank you for your time. Uh, I'll meet you again in July. Uh, uh, to share with you our, uh, our, our view on the uh, third quarter outlook. Thank you.